Hello and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be looking at the best time to stop gambling. Now if you're watching this video you'd like you to fall into one of two camps. Either you think you may be gambling a bit too much and you're wondering whether you should be concerned about your gambling and so you're thinking about cutting down or maybe even quitting gambling altogether. Alternatively you may be someone who knows that you need to quit gambling as it's already maybe causing some problems in your life and you want to to sort of take that action and, and, and quit gambling. Now before we get on to the main topic of today's video, let me address the first group of people that I mentioned. And those are the ones that are maybe thinking they're gambling a little bit too much. Maybe they're concerned about their frequency of the gambling and thinking maybe they should sort of try and cut down a bit. Now let me say this, if you want, don't know whether to be concerned about your gambling, then the chances are that you should be concerned. And if you're wondering whether you need to cut down, then I'm pretty certain that you do need to cut down or indeed give up altogether because in my experience and we will talk about this in another video cutting down simply doesn't work so back to the main point of today's video when exactly is the best time to finally draw a line under your gambling and say that enough is indeed enough in my experience there are typically three responses to this question the ideal time the reactionary time and of course the best time to quit gambling and we'll discuss that one at the end so if we dress them in order, the ideal time. Now this I call as the going out on a high time. It's a pie in the sky, hypothetical best time. And it sounds brilliant in practice. It's a bit sort of fluffy and all sort of rainbows and unicorns. Basically, the idea is that you go out with a bang. You go out on a win and you say, right, next time I have a big win, that'll be it and I won't gamble anymore. If we start by looking at why this theory is indeed pointless before we look at the obvious glaring flaws in it, if you've been gambling for a reasonable period of time, any big win is very, very unlikely to cover the smallest proportion of your losses to date. So the idea of going out on a high that you've beaten the bookies or you've beaten the casino, it's, it's, it's nonsense because ultimately they've still won in the long term. The biggest problem with this theory, of course, is that it simply doesn't work. We all know and we don't even need to be out there putting this into practice to know that the last thing you're going to want to do after a big win and that big rush of adrenaline, that big rush of dopamine, is quit. How many times have you had a win and rather than take a walk away with your big win, you've rounded it down or you've just tried to round it up to the next amount or you've gone back the next day and tried to replicate the win. As it happens, a big win is only likely to act as more of a catalyst to further gambling. So yes, this sounds lovely in practice. It's going out on a high sounds brilliant. It sounds like you've actually won a small victory against, like I say, whether it be the casinos or the bookies or whatever your choice of gambling establishment is. But ultimately, they've still won. And the fact of the matter is, it could take you a significant amount of time or a significant number of additional losses before you even achieve this. And by then, they've won even more. Right, so on to the second time, or the second most common time people quit gambling. And this is what I call the reactionary time, otherwise known as the gambling hangover or the never again method. This is, I can almost guarantee, the most common time at which people say they're going to quit gambling. And this is generally after a big loss. What will happen is you'll suffer a big loss. You'll be quite angry with yourself that you've done it, particularly if you've been through this cycle before. This is why I call this the gambling hangover. You wake up the next day, you may have five or six seconds of blissful ignorance, as I'm sure we've all experienced, and then the memory of the loss will hit you. At this point, you'll be determined to never gamble again, and your resolve will be at its absolute strongest. You feel like you you never want to gamble again, and in most situations, you can't go out and gamble anyway because you're skin. So, in the very, very short term, this is by far and away the most effective way of stopping you from gambling. Not just because your resolve is at its strongest and that gambling is possibly the last thing on your mind, but also because you're likely to have burned through any resources you have with which to gamble further, so it's very, very easy to, in fact, refrain. The biggest problem with this method, of course, is that much like a traditional hangover, a gambling hangover will fade and the memory of the pain that that, uh, that particular loss caused you will fade and you'll start to have these thoughts of, well, maybe it wasn't so bad. Maybe that was a one-off. Maybe that was just a particularly bit of bad bit of luck that I had and you may go out and you may go out with the best of intentions of okay well I'll, I'll start gambling less and you'll start reining it in but we know very much how quickly that could snowball 
The other way in which this relates to a traditional hangover is the slightly more dangerous hair of the dog. Now, obviously, hair of the dog with when you're drinking means going out the very next day and having a couple of beers, maybe to make yourself feel a little bit better when your head's pounding and your mouth's dry. The problem with this from a gambling perspective is a hair of the dog might involve chasing the previous day's losses. You may go out with the idea that, well, if I can just win half of it back, then I'll be happy, I'll be satisfied. But again, while this may be true, we, we know as gamblers that we're never, ever satisfied. So if we, even if we did win back half the money, we'd then push for all of the money, and inevitably we end up losing and back to square one again. Now, there is some benefits to this never again method. The gambling hangover can provide a very, very useful window of abstinence for you to then take actual practical steps towards quitting gambling. And by that, I mean putting blocks in place, talking to people, seeking help, and doing things like this and going on to YouTube or similar forums and looking at videos from people who have been there, seen that, and unfortunately got many, many t-shirts. So if you are currently suffering from a gambling hangover and you're laying, maybe laying in bed, thinking, mulling over yesterday's losses and looking for advice or information on how to start the process of quitting gambling, then what I'll say is this, use this resolve, use this temporary motivation, and it will be temporary, to go out there and actually put real life blocks in place and seek help and get advice and do everything you can so that when that hangover does fade, you're in a much, much better, much stronger position to continue your period of abstinence and to continue your recovery. So now we've talked about the two flawed ways of quitting. What I would suggest is the right time to quit gambling and always the right time to quit gambling is now. Now, this will make you sound a bit self-righteous, but trust me, everything I say is based purely on experience and a significant number of failed attempts based on either theory one or theory two. More often theory two, where you swear never again. The only way to effectively quit gambling is to do it in the cold light of day when you're sober, you're not suffering from a dopamine rush and you're not, you haven't been drinking or anything of that sort and you do it practically and you do it logically but now is the time to do it. You're online, you're watching this video, so there are already steps you can take with a few clicks to help prevent you from gambling again. The very fact you're watching this video, to me, indicates that you know you need to stop, whether that be on a completely conscious or a subconscious level. So do it now, don't put it off. Watch my other videos and I'll explain about some of the practical steps you can take to start quitting gambling. In the meantime, if you seek advice, go to somewhere like Gamcare, Go to the GamStop website if your problems are online. You can then block yourself from online casinos. So when this gambling hangover fades or this brief period of motivation to do something about your gambling subsides and the uh, demons start creeping back in, tempting you to have another go, then there'll be something in place. It won't be impenetrable. There is nothing, there's no such thing as a watertight solution to stop you from gambling. But if you take the steps now, then it, it might buy you that little bit more time, that little bit more thinking time next time the urges strike you. Anyway, thanks very much for watching this video today. Um, if you liked it, if you think it may be helpful, then please do subscribe. Um, I'm going to try and put some more videos up. It has been a bit of a while since my last one. And uh, yeah, I'll leave some links in the description for practical places you can go and get help right away. And uh, yeah, until next time anyway, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.